This is the newly released Solus 4.4. The once exceedingly popular Linux distro has rolled out a major update to signal its revival with a bang. Yes, Solus is back from the dead. Solus has always been a beloved Linux distro with a strong and loyal community behind it. But Trouble in Paradise had brought this sensational distro down. All imaginable kinds of problems, server breakdowns, team breakups and many more challenges came at this distro and it did go down for a moment. Okay, a little more than a moment. But now, the original members of the core team are coming back to drag Solus back from the underworld. They have big plans and Solus 4.4 is a big update to show their commitment to bringing this fantastic distro back to the world of the living. I installed the latest Solus immediately after its release as I'm a huge Solus fan and this version brings big updates and major improvements throughout the system. Changes in the desktop strategy, a boosted hardware support, enhancements to improve system performance and many more exciting things rock this update. So this video is going to be a quick yet deep dive with Solus 4.4. By the way, if you are looking to learn Linux and level up your Linux game, the link to my course Linux Mastery Express is given in the description below. It's designed to teach you Linux commands, how to use the vEditor and shell scripting in the fastest way possible. So check that out. Under the hood, Solus 4.4 is powered by the Linux kernel 6.3.8 and this brings the much needed hardware support for newer devices. Notably, a set of new GPUs from AMD, Intel and Nvidia get support here. Nvidia's 40 series GPUs, AMD Radeon 7000 series cards and Intel Arc cards get supported on Solus 4.4. Additionally, improvements in many hardware related areas come to Solus users, all thanks to the new kernel. Solus also brings secure boot with this version. Finally, this is a great security feature considering that Solus has an automated driver installer and users don't need to tinker around with driver installation and stuff, so this conveniently ups the security. You will need to manually enroll Solus Security Certificate. I've linked the instructions for that in the description below. Another cool feature we get is, now ZRAM is enabled by default providing a better user experience and RAM usage for devices with low amount of memory that is below 3 GBs. Now for the uninitiated, ZRAM is a compression technique that is applied to the content in your RAM, thereby allowing for more things to be held in your RAM. This is specifically useful when you have low amounts of RAM, great addition. Mesa has been upgraded to version 23 and brings many improvements in the graphics rendering. Moving on, there are important updates in the desktop environment department as well. Solus flagship desktop Budgie is available in its latest version here and it looks stunningly gorgeous. I've always been a big fan of Budgie desktop. It's got everything that I resonate with. It's built using the latest tech stack and libraries. It has that bottom panel based workflow. It's simple as it can get and is productivity oriented. Budgie itself has gotten few improvements in this version of Solus. Firstly, we get an updated Budgie screenshot application that lets you take screenshots with more flexibility. The media player in this side panel here has gotten a compact redesign. There are polishing touches throughout the desktop. You notice this when you are using the system and everything feels more fresh now. One important change that you'll notice is the file manager has been replaced. Previously, GNOME's Nautilus file manager was used. Now, Linux Mint's Nemo replaces that. This is done to ensure a degree of fidelity or consistency in the application theme. GNOME's newer GTK4 theme is very different from the Budgie look. Apart from Budgie, Solus is available with GNOME, KD Plasma and Mate desktops as well. The GNOME version comes in a refreshed look and feel. This time around, GNOME's default Advaita theme is used as the default. And for applications, the dark mode is set. But for icons, Papyrus icon pack is used. This brings about a distinct look to GNOME. GNOME feels like GNOME but there is that touch of Solus here. We are getting the GNOME 43.5 version here, so the redesigned status menu with pill controls and all the newer GNOME goodies are present here. In fact, the GNOME version of Solus is a big overhaul from the 4.3 version mainly because of big updates in the GNOME desktop itself. One more thing that really makes the desktop shine here is a set of gorgeous desktop backgrounds. Not just GNOME, but you get this set of wallpapers with all the flavors of Solus and they add a great ambience that makes the system feel so calm. The icon pack, the theme and one of these wallpapers is a great combination. Great job with these here. Moving on to the KDE Plasma camp, we are getting the latest version of Plasma that's available right now, that is Plasma 5.27. Again, we see Solus theming here. I really love Plasma's default breeze theme and prefer to use it that way, but Solus theming looks super cool here. Again, we get that relaxed vibe here with this theme. We get Papyrus icons and there are big updates from Plasma Camp as well. 
Plasma 5.27 is a big update that brings many new things to Solus 4.4. You can add floating panels if that's your thing. Actually, with Plasma 6, the next major version of Plasma, there's a good chance that this bottom panel is going to be a floating panel. So yeah, remember, you heard it first from Linux Techs. Plasma 5.27 brings a completely new tiling mechanism, which is really cool. I absolutely love this tiling system. It lets you create tiling layouts which you can reuse with apps, really great. You press Windows plus T to adjust the layouts and drag applications while holding Shift to snap them to these tiles. This tiling is fully flexible and anyone who regularly uses tiling should definitely give this one a try. There's also a new overview mode which can be invoked by pressing Windows plus W. There's also a touch mode for touch screens and a big screen mode to use Plasma with large screens like TVs. One more thing that I want to notice, Plasma 5.27 brings vastly improved multi-monitor setup which has been receiving some good word from the community. So if you use multiple monitors and are a fan of Solus, then Plasma version may be worth live booting into. There's big news in the Mate camp. Firstly, we are getting Mate desktop version 1.27 here which is very well tested and stable. Mate is made beautiful here with Solus colors. In fact, Solus Mate is one of the best looking Mate distros. The wallpapers, the icon pack, the matte panels, it all comes together very nicely. Solus Mate is the most lightweight version of Solus, so if you're after that extra oomph, this is what you should get. In other big news, the Solus team has planned to let Mate desktop go in favor of XFC for the next version of Solus, that is version 4.5. The team feels that Mate desktop doesn't have a credible plan to implement VLAN, so this decision has been made. But the team has also stressed that they'll provide a seamless upgrade path for the Mate to XFC transition when Solus 4.5 hits the shelves. By seamless, they might mean after you apply the update, the default desktop environment will be changed to XFC automatically. But that's an issue for another day. Right now, if Mate desktop is something that you resonate with, you can go ahead and enjoy it. The new Solus also brings an updated application suite. Mainly, we get Firefox version 114 and LibreOffice 7.5.3 here. All the variants of Solus come with the latest version of Rhythmbox for music playback. This is just the tip of the iceberg. All the out-of-the-box apps here have new versions of software and you can install additional software using the Software Center here. The Software Center gives you access to a large repository of software. Now, Solus repositories are not as huge as, say, Ubuntu repositories, but they are satisfactory for most use cases. Most people are going to find what they want here. All the development tools, media editing software, utilities, they are all present here. Additionally, there's a section called third party. And this section has some important software by top vendors like Google Chrome, Android Studio, Plex Media Server, few top IDEs, Skype, Slack, Spotify, and few other things that most people use. This section has been a great decision by Solus development team as it contains some software that may not be open source but are used extensively by people. Solus 4.4 is not just about updating the packages, but it's about reviving a beloved Linux distro, reviving a team, reviving a community and reviving a great computing experience provided by this distro. The process of revival has begun. The team has had a learning experience by all the things that went wrong and it's ready with a game plan for Solus 4.5, Solus 5 major update and beyond. To briefly recap what went wrong with Solus, basically all the infrastructure, build servers and development servers were hosted in Rochester Institute of Technology and only one person had physical access to these. There was a hardware level issue and the servers went offline. Due to bad weather and other issues, the servers could not be reached and repaired. This cascaded and resulted in Solus being unreachable for a long time. Eventually, everything went down and Solus was marked as dead. You know how harsh Linux communities can be and there was a lot of drama on Reddit, but members of Solus team did a very good job at damage control. Now that it's all over, Solus team has learned a lot from this episode and have come up with a solid game plan for the future. Currently, Solus is an independent Linux distribution that is not based on any other distro. But the team is strongly considering rebasing Solus on a distro called Serpent OS. Now, Serpent OS is a distro created by Aiki Doherty, the original creator of Solus. Serpent OS is quite special. It is built using the latest tech stack, latest technologies, a modern approach to software building, and a set of impressive features. We are talking offline rollbacks, atomic updates, immutability, and continuous and verifiable delivery of packages. Solus has lost a lot of time. While it has shown that it's alive, there is a huge technical debt nevertheless. 
rebasing Solus on Serpent OS is going to allow it to take a massive leap technically. Implementing all these modern features is going to take ages, but by collaborating with Serpent OS, Solus is going to jump ahead light years. The developer of Serpent OS understands Solus, so the whole process of rebasing is going to be very smooth. This rebasing will completely change Solus for the better. It will make it more secure, more stable, and it will provide a better user experience. Solus will be moving away from a single-person accessible server to more robust multi-cloud architecture. DigitalOcean and Hetzner have been chosen to deploy the new development and build infrastructures. This will completely remove the need for physical access and will allow multiple members of the team to have full access to the systems. The team will also adopt Terraform, which is a superb DevOps tooling and Bitwarden Teams, which will help share credentials securely across a team. These changes will let members of the core team perform package syncs without having to rely on a single person. In essence, Solus is removing numerous vulnerabilities that can arise from focusing all the power in the hands of a single person. Solus team aims to take steps that promote a shared domain ownership. Transparency and more opportunities for community involvement are also going to be top priorities in making Solus a manageable and sustainable project. Previously, there was a core team and global maintenance where there was a very limited decision making and control by anybody other than the core team. Now that's gonna change. To achieve these, multiple teams have been created. A technical steering committee, infrastructure and operations team, community engagement and communications team, stack maintainers, package maintainers and web developers. The responsibilities and decision making power have been more granularly spread over the entire Solus team to make things smoother. Solus had been a fan favorite, one of the top distros of the Linux world. Its practical and functional desktop, reliable and slow rolling release cycle, and a super polished user experience catapulted Solus to the top spot. But bad days come for everybody, and they did eventually come for Solus. While it's commendable that Solus has bounced back, its long term survival is entirely another thing. See, the users, including me, want something that's reliable and functional. Brand loyalty will not make me stick to a distro if the distro doesn't work. So Solus developers have a mountain of work ahead of them. And if any of the developers happen to see this video, I have a personal message. You guys have done great work before. Solus will always be your legacy. But right now, you're the underdogs and we as the Solus community are rooting for you. Yes, things did go wrong. And you might have seen messages by community members that nobody wants to see. But there are enough of us that appreciate what you do. We understand that you have jobs, families and do this after work and at times it can be daunting. But you'll get through. We see that you have an actionable plan and trust that Solus will be up again. Back to the video. As I said, the Solus team have laid out an actionable plan and are already going through the checklist. The rebasing of Solus is going to be their greatest decision. So should you use Solus? Is it reliable? I think yeah. I'm not going to go out of my way to recommend Solus as it is. That thing will be earned by Solus after a year or two now. But yeah, there's no harm in checking it out. As long as you are not using it to deploy any mission critical systems, Solus should be okay. The download links for all the versions of Solus are given in the description below. If you are looking to learn Linux and level up your Linux game, link for my course Linux Mastery Express is given in the description below. Next up, check out NixOS which is the hottest Linux distro of 2023 with some unseen kind of features. Seriously, don't miss this one. Alright, this is Linux Techs, signing out.